when we destroy everything, what remains? This is one of the many ideas explored within the works of the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. And the answer that he supplied to this question was the Ubermensch, a sort of post-apocalyptic figure who represents the next stage of human evolution. The concept of the Ubermensch has been studied and manipulated for years and years, and it is almost impossible to distill its meaning into a single sentence. So I did further research into the subject and noticed similarities between this concept and the title of character of One Piece, Monkey D. Luffy. In both their messages of being fiercely, belligerently independent, in a world where that seems more like a rarity, we can find some level of comfort. But this description is minimalistic at best, so let's explore the parallels and the idea with Luffy more meaningfully. And if you end up liking this video, be sure to like and subscribe. We could say that the idea of the Ubermensch was birthed in the late 19th century by Nietzsche. However, for its most accurate origin, we could trace this idea all the way back to the ancient writer Lucian, who discussed a uh, hyperanthropos. Even more directly relevant was Ralph Waldo Emerson and his oversaw, an idea he presents in his 1841 essay that opines that the unified soul of humanity could ascend beyond the highest reaches of mankind. Now, Emerson and Nietzsche are diametrically opposed. However, they do hold one thing in common, the idea of a higher self. So then, enough of the yapping and what the hell is the Ubermensch anyways? Well, the first mention of this was in his book, Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Nietzsche expresses that mankind has great untapped potential. He says, Man in his current state, weighed down heavily by his bad conscience, is truly a sick animal. But perhaps the condition is like pregnancy, a sickness with future possibilities. Man is such an incomplete transitional creature that it almost seems as if nature had some plans for him, as if man were not meant to be an end, but only a way, an episode, a bridge, a great promise. This gives an idea of the Ubermensch. A being who lives beyond the normal man by rejecting the bonds of social norms and finding true fulfillment and individualistic, unique happiness, not bound to the ideas of others. This higher vision of man has broken the bonds of desires and expectations and was perfectly free, free to be great. In this idea do we begin to see the character outline of Luffy start to take form. Kogito Ergo Sum, or I think, therefore I am, was a statement coined by Rene Descartes, a rebuttal to Dubito Ergo Sum, which insinuates that without doubt we cannot think. What this basically means is that the existence of doubt is what affirms human existence. We are unsure of things, so we ponder them endlessly. We try to over rationalize concepts, and in that, become self fulfilling prophecies of our own doubts, and essentially shackle ourselves. For the character of Luffy, however, who represents freedom, we see a different approach. Now, for my One Piece fans watching this, have you ever wondered why way back in Arlong Park, Luffy refuses, for instance, to listen to Nami's story, and instead chooses to take a walk, an action he can perform free of thought? And no, he isn't just a dickhead, or maybe he is. <laughs> but anyway, can one really say they are free if they are bound by a strong vendetta? Emotions make us humans. However, the byproduct of our emotions, which is thought, often slows us down. This is the bad conscience that Nietzsche spoke about. Order perfectly displays this with Luffy and Sanji in Fishman Island. Sanji, who is often used to represent human depth, shows resentment against Jinbei as a result of not only his care for Nami, but as a natural response to one of the sources of trauma experienced by a loved one. However, Luffy, as far back as Impor Down, holds no apparent resentment against him, and later in Fishman Island, sleeps while the story is being retold. He exerts conscious control over his own thoughts, 
deciding to live in the present and paying no mind to past events. In this way, Luffy is showing traits embodied by the Ubermensch, actively defining the course of his own fate. Luffy could have possibly held a grudge in future against Jinbei if he had listened that day in Arlong Park, which would have drastically altered the course of his fate. Luffy, for this reason, usually holds a present tense mindset, choosing not to overfixate on what was, what could be, and sometimes even what is, but rather choosing to flow freely to the course of what is transpiring at the moment. It is for this reason, as confirmed by Oda, that Luffy is shown not to possess any internal monologue whatsoever, defiance of the normal human impulse to doubt, overthink, and ponder on events has allowed Luffy to thrive and steer the course of his life. In regards to how this connects with the sentiment, I think, therefore I am, we have to understand the basis of the statement. Human existence is affirmed by thoughts. Thoughts is a byproduct of doubt. But what happens in the absence of said doubt? Gods, often heralded as such due to the ability to affect causality, if you can affect causality, what is there to doubt? Despite being fundamentally human, Luffy, who represents the Ubermensch, is a god of his own fate, and as a result, directly juxtaposes this philosophical concept. We see this against Enel, the being who was supposed to represent God. By refusing to give in to the inevitable factor of causality that Enel embodies, Luffy performs something which is seen as an act of God, directly defying this being and claiming Godhood in this situation. Speaking more on the subject of doubt, it is something which is commonplace for normal humans. We are often not in control of what happens, causing us to second guess and question ourselves. In Drum Island, for instance, we see Chopper express doubts which almost prevents him from chasing his dreams. Chopper is another character who has been used often to critique the idea of humanity. Luffy saying, shut up, let's go, is a show of his ideals as he implores Chopper to stop questioning what could be and decide what is in the now. By making such decisions, we free ourselves ever so slightly from the existence of doubt and in a way become something greater than human. Chopper, by the time skip, decides to cast aside his doubts because of Luffy, and as a result, frees himself of his limiting factors. A monster is often pictured as mindless and aggressive. In Chopper's case, his acceptance of himself as a monster means he does not need to overthink or express doubt. He can just be mindless, meaning it's full of expression and freedom. In Nietzsche's works, he also details that for the utopia, for the concept to exist, there has to be change. As Nietzsche notes, the aristocrats of intellect cannot be the ones to enact this change. Studying is fine, but the ones to bring this change must be strong, and not just physically too, but mentally, master of themselves and with the ability to master others. This, he thought, would give them the tools to withstand the looming struggle. Herein, we see another reflection of Luffy Luffy is strong physically, sure, but his overwhelming strength of will is what makes him formidable and gives him the grit to continue to push through adversity, a trait that is required to bring the change. His understanding of himself is represented by his awakening, which only happens when one's body and mind align with the fruit. In this case, Luffy symbolically aligns entirely with freedom. Finally, we see what is perhaps Luffy's greatest asset against the symbol of stagnation represented by the world government. His ability to master others or otherwise empathize with them and draw allies to himself. When we carefully stack all these traits together, we see a clear outline of Nietzsche's Ubermensch staring back at us. Nietzsche's own personal life was no ideal. He was plagued by heart issues and psychological turmoil, eventually resulting in a complete psychotic breakdown. In 
Zarathustra. Nietzsche showed an ideal man who endured suffering and used it to achieve greatness. In this vein, one could argue that the Ubermensch is just a persona, a character that writers like Nietzsche and 